Hey, before the video starts, make sure I drop a like down below. As always, we're going for a thousand likes. And also, let me know what console you guys have in the comments. If you're on Xbox Type 1, if you're on PS4 Type 2, because I have both consoles. I don't know which one you guys want me to play more. Anyway, let's get right into the video. Yo, what's good, guys? Peter here. We are back with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. Unless you're a pure stretch big that shoots over people. He's gonna shoot over me. <laughs> Lightly. Oh my! Because no matter how contested... 2K is still gonna let it go in. Anyway, I've been seeing a lot of people mess up their player builds. Like, not just recently, but the whole year. And not just bad people either. Like, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people making build videos, they still mess up their player builds. Also, the game's been out for a couple months now, so we really know what is the best thing to do when building your player now. So I hope this helps you guys out. These are a bunch of common mistakes people make when creating their players that obviously you don't want to do because it's going to ruin your whole build. Don't forget to drop a like down below. As always, we're going for a thousand likes. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notifications. Anyway, let's get right into the video. Alright, the first big mistake people make when creating their player is making their guard either too tall or too short when they want to be able to speed boost. As we all know, speed boosting is super important. You know, you're, you're pretty much a dud without being able to speed boost if you're going to be a short guard. But people still mess up their heights when building their guards this year. You guys probably remember this. At the beginning of the year, 2K released this chart, which was basically supposed to show you every single archetype that could speed boost and at what height they could speed boost at. Now, there was a couple things that were misleading about this chart. If you guys remember, I made a video about this, but first, it was only for players with default wingspans, and second, it was when you could speed boost at 99 overall. Like, let's be honest, who's really going to be 99 overall watching this video? Hey, if you are, let me know in the comments, but it's pretty hard to get, you know, you're going to have to play a lot of a lot of robots, man. Unless, of course, you play park, and then it's like 10,000 park games. But yeah, honestly, I would not pay attention to that chart, and that chart alone caused a lot of people to ruin their player builds, not just because of the chart but a lot of youtubers making videos on the chart being like yo now we know everybody can speed boost this and that if you're making a guard that you want to be able to speed boost you're definitely going to want to do this so first select your archetype then select your height then go to your wingspan and make it minimum look at your attributes and go to your ball control if it is 86 that is not high enough like that's where you're going to get at 99 overall don't do that. And the reason why you want to put minimum wingspan, I'm going to talk more about wingspans later, but it's going to give you a huge boost to your ball control. So keep changing your height, you know, still minimizing the wingspan and keep checking your attributes until that ball control is somewhere at least at 88. 88 is kind of that sweet spot to where you're still going to have a good height, but you're going to be able to speed boost, not at like 99 overall. Like it's going to be way before that. And if you're grinding your badges in my career, you're probably just going to get it from my career anyway, because you rep up playing my career. Now, if you want to be able to dribble a lot, you want that to be at least 90, because as as your stamina lowers your ball control actually lowers if you have 86 ball control and your stamina just goes down like halfway you're not gonna be able to speed boost anymore so if you're gonna dribble a lot use that same tactic but make sure your ball control is gonna end up at at least 90. i understand why people still mess this up because of that chart and because of so many people making videos about that chart but now that i've had the game for a couple months i know exactly what you need to do to be able to speed boost and not wait to 99 overall all right the next mistake people make when creating their player is their wingspan yeah, people mess up their wingspan a lot, and they changed what wingspan affects this year, so it's not like you should just always max it out like previous years. It's a lot different this year. People still mess this up. Like I said, if you're making a dribbling archetype where you want to be able to speed boost, you definitely should minimize your wingspan because if not, you're not going to be able to speed boost. And a lot of people are like, oh, minimize your wingspan. Oh, you're going to have T-Rex arms. You're not going to be able to do anything. First of all, having a minimum wingspan in 2K19 is still two inches longer than your height, so it's not like it's that bad. Second of all, if it's something like speed boosting, it makes no sense. Like, okay, okay, I don't want to have a minimum wingspan, so I'm going to make my player three inches shorter just so he doesn't have a minimum wingspan, but it's still the same length. Like there are people who are like, oh, I don't want to have a 6'5 player with a 6'7 wingspan because that's minimum. And then they make your player 6'2 with a 6'7 wingspan because it's not minimum. Like you guys see that logic. It's just, it, it just doesn't work. So if you're a playmaker or a shot creator, definitely minimum wingspan because you're going to be dribbling and shooting a lot. And if you're a sharp or stretch, also minimum wingspan because it's going to give you a huge boost to your shot like six or seven attributes to threes and middies i see so many people who make like stretches or sharps and they start missing wide open they're like why am i missing wide open i have all oh, my badges hot spots this and that and it's because they messed up their player build to begin with because they didn't make their wingspan go down so they don't have that boost to their shot in previous years it was better to make it maximum but the difference between a maximum and a minimum wingspan this year is like 12 attributes like 12 to 14 attributes so think of it it's a difference between having something like a 90 over 
open shot three and a 76 open shot three. Like that's huge. But if you're anything other than a playmaker, shot creator, sharp or stretch, max out your wingspan. The reward you get for having a max wingspan with those archetypes is definitely going to outweigh what it penalizes. So if you're like a slasher or lockdown or glass gear and whatever, a max wingspan is going to help you a lot because that's what your archetype is meant to do. So wingspan, easy rule. If you're a shot creator, playmaker, stretch or sharp, minimum, everything else maximum. All right, next big mistake people make is that they make the wrong position for their archetype. I know so many people that choose a really good, you know, really overpowered archetype and then they choose the wrong position for it. Position matters a lot this year, especially with the badges. You guys all saw I dropped the best lockdown build, you know, a few days ago and I said it's really important that you make it a shooting guard because at shooting guard with a lockdown you get silver corner specialist. Like I have no idea who thought of that, but that's super overpowered and that's the only position that gets that. And a lot of people mess up their lockdown build because they don't make him a two guard. And that doesn't just go with lockdowns, it goes with pretty much every build in the game. So you might be choosing a really good archetype, but take a look at the badges between the positions, you know, for the same archetype, but just with different positions because they do change. That's a huge reason why I make, you know, best build videos because yeah, it might be the best playmaker build, but it might not be a pure playmaker and it might not be a point guard. Same goes with any other archetype. All right, fourth mistake people make when messing up their player is make Making a build that nobody wants to play with or that just doesn't work with any other build. It's already hard enough to find people to play with in this game. Just because of the archetype system, you have to have the, like the right archetype combination, this and that, badges, win percentage, like it's hard to find people to play with. And if you're making an archetype that nobody wants to play with because it just doesn't work, it's not a good archetype combination or it's not a good lineup, your player is pretty much wasted. Like for example, a pure glass cleaner. Pure glass cleaners literally just set screens and get boards, right? A glass cleaner is really only elite if you want to be really good at the game on the twos because obviously you don't have to shoot threes, you know, let's make it take it. And on the threes and prime or whatever, like a lot of guards aren't going to want to play with you because they don't want to play with inside centers. So yeah, pure glass cleaner is a pretty good build, but think there's only a couple archetypes that can really play with it and there's only really one game mode that you can play it with. But then you have something like a pure stretch, you know, literally works on every single game mode and can play with pretty much any archetype because it's stretches the four you know you can do the aa glitch you can create your own shot like there are so many things that you can do with a pure stretch and it works on every single mode like if you make a pure stretch a lot of people are going to hit you up to run just because it works with pretty much any archetype so if that's going to be your one build or a build that you put a lot of time into make sure it's a build that a lot of people can play with just think of it logically i'm going to make some videos showing you know best lineups for every game mode generally players that can shoot are better on pretty much all the game modes than players that can't shoot but keep that in mind you know you want to make a player that a lot of people are going to want to play with and if you have friends that already have certain archetypes that you want to run with you're going to want to make something that is compatible with those all right next mistake people make when creating their players is their height i don't know why people still mess this up like it's pretty much been the same way every 2k but make your player as tall as possible there's a reason why everybody in nba is super tall because being tall gives you an advantage a good rule of thumb is be as tall as possible that's still within your position and still allows you to do what you want your player to do so for example the speed boost obviously we talked about this make your player as tall as possible but if you're like say a pure lockdown and you want to be a two guard because that's what you're supposed to be make your player 6 8 because that's as tall as you can be as a shooting guard if you're making a pure stretch no you're not going to make a pure stretch five because they're complete trash but you're going to make a pure stretch four and you're going to make him seven feet that's as tall as you can go with that position Every center, seven foot three, it's that simple. There's no, oh, I'm gonna get a higher vertical, so I'm gonna make him three inches shorter. If you're making your player three inches shorter and his standing reach is like six inches shorter, but his vertical is six inches higher, you're still gonna be jumping at the same thing. You realize that, right? You, you can jump just as high as the other person. There's also the classic power forward bait. A lot of people are making power forwards that should be centers. The only archetypes that should be a power forward in this game are a pure stretch and maybe a paint protector. I haven't dropped the best paint protector build yet. So I haven't made one yet, I haven't done a bunch of research, but like glass cleaners, post scores, like all of these archetypes should be centers. And of course they should be seven three. So like I said, go as tall as you can possibly be in your position and if you want to be able to speed boost with still being able to speed boost all right next big mistake people make when building their players now this isn't too common but a lot of people still do it is listening to a trash youtuber every youtuber makes build videos because so many people don't know what build to make but why would you listen to somebody who isn't even good at 2k when you're trying to know what build to make not every youtuber's advice on either build or jump shots or whatever is very good like if you're watching a youtuber that posts new best build like twice a week 
it's probably not the new best build. Same thing with jump shots. I've said this before. It can be hard to tell whether a YouTuber is actually giving you good advice, like when it comes to making your build or whatever. But just in general, if they're not that good at 2K, they probably don't know how to make builds that well. If they're posting the new best guard build like four times a month, it's probably not the new best guard build. It doesn't change that much. And also, if they're trying to tell you something that you know isn't true, then other stuff they're probably telling you isn't true as well. So just keep that in mind. Not all YouTubers are going to tell you stuff that's accurate. All right, here's another mistake people make when building their players is the weight of their my player a lot of people mess this up because it doesn't affect too much or like ah, it doesn't really matter i'll max it out or i'm gonna put it at this or that now there's no general rule as to like what you're supposed to make the weight of your player because there's so many different archetypes so many different positions and so many different builds out there obviously if you're watching one of my build videos i'm going to show the weight because that's the best weight for that player but there's people out there who will make like a pure playmaker and then max out the weight like that's only going to make you slower you're not going to get contact dunks anyway why would you want to boost your contact dunk like i said there isn't really a general rule but you can kind of tell what you want to do based on the attributes like when you boost your weight you're getting a boost to like strength box out and contact dunk why would you need that on like a 6-5 play sharp just think of it like common sense when would i need a boost to my attributes to max out my weight when is it okay to have a minimum weight sometimes it's good to put in the middle sometimes it's like it really differs based on your player so that's something you're really gonna have to think about i put in all my build videos because it is really important but yeah a lot of people do mess up their weight so don't mess it up final mistake people make when building their players is they don't make what they want to make like if if you're going to be taking dunks and layups don't make a pure sharpshooter don't just make a build because somebody said it's the best build because sure it might be a really good build but if you're not good at playing that way or if you don't want to play that way it's not going to be the best build for you you're not going to be maximizing your potential as like a 2k player i'm not trying to sound corny but you guys know what i mean there are plenty of builds out there for people that want to do a bunch of different things don't just make a pure stretch because they're super overpowered there's a lot of overpowered builds i just used the slasher and sharp thing for an example but if you like doing something in 2k there's probably a build for that like if you like playing defense lockdown if you like posting up post score obviously don't make everything that you want in a build but make the archetype you want at least there's a best build for pretty much every archetype out there unless it's like complete trash so yeah so many people make those mistakes i'm just here to tell you don't make them because you're gonna mess up your player hopefully this helped you guys thank you guys for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed again make sure you guys drop a like down below as always we're going for a thousand likes and if you're new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notice to join the family run that daily upload grind and i'll talk to you guys in the next one